Undercover inside licensed puppy farms. Filthy pens, sick dogs. The breeders given the stamp of approval by inspectors. No water, no bedding, dirty. Dogs used as breeding stock with scant regard for their welfare. Yes, she didn't have a chance. They were in a dreadful condition. Behind adverts promising happy, healthy puppies, we discover the casualties of this multi-million pound industry. We rescue a dog ourselves. Not nice at all, bless her. Councils and vets were supposed to clean up this industry. Tonight, we confront those allowing this to continue. So you will not answer any of our questions, no? Bye-bye. No? This is Alfie, my new puppy. Breeding dogs is big business. Look at any of these selling websites and you'll find dogs going for hundreds, even thousands of pounds. And what's striking is how many of these dogs are born and bred here in Wales. I'm travelling through Carmarthenshire and Ceredigion. This is known as the puppy farm capital of the UK. Pups born here are sold to owners all over the country. Owners like Danielle Foley. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on! <laughs> she found Winston, a beagle, advertised online. He said that he was like a reputable breeder and he had his own website. I was kind of like, you know, it was kind of like all like the perfect picture, if you kind of get me. She agreed to buy Winston for £650 from the breeder who was licensed by the council. She didn't realise that she'd bought from a puppy farm. He had a summer house kind of thing just at the bottom of his property where only two of the puppies were. I didn't see any of the other puppies or the puppy's mum. Within 24 hours, Winston became seriously unwell. He was lying down, and when I picked him up, his body just kind of flopped. It was just really weak. So we took him to the out-of-hours vet. Winston was left fighting for his life just days after leaving the licensed breeder. Puppy farming has long been controversial. Four years ago, new rules were supposed to improve the industry. Health checks from vets, stricter annual inspections by local authorities. But despite repeated warnings, dogs are still falling sick after being bred in filthy, unfit conditions. Conditions that prospective owners are unlikely to see. I'm meeting a campaigner who covertly infiltrates puppy farms across the UK. She agreed to show me undercover footage of what conditions can really be like inside puppy farms. No water, no bedding, dirty. So this is presumably an illegal and licensed farm, is it? No, this is a licensed farm. A licensed farm? Yes, it makes you angry, doesn't it? Because you've heard all about these new regulations that were going to come in and how it's going to make welfare better for the dogs. And it's obviously not doing that. We were shown footage taken on Welsh puppy farms in between inspections. She says she gets regular tip-offs that things aren't right, especially here in Wales. The council have the power to issue enforcement notices and if they don't meet them, they can take away their licence, but it very seldom seems to happen. It's not just puppies that can suffer at puppy farms. The dogs used for breeding can also become casualties of this industry. Come on, Max. Bunnies, Mags and Dud were among five dogs handed over by a puppy farmer to rescuers last year. They were in an awful, dreadful condition. They didn't like the strangers, they didn't like people coming up to them, certainly didn't want to be touched. 
The rescue charity says it was told by the breeder that Dud had a prolapsed womb. But vets later found it was a large tumour the size of a fist that experts said would not have happened overnight. I can't even begin to think what conditions they must have been in. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, puppy farms are inspected at least once a year, and if you have more than three litters, you have to have a licence. But councils don't routinely publish inspection reports. So how do you know which breeders are playing by the rules? Come on, Dad. Come on. Sit down. Come on, good boy. We had to use the Freedom of Information Act to try and get hold of council inspection reports, and some refused to hand them over. Some of those we did see showed that despite some breeders being warned again and again by councils about welfare, they were still re-licensed year after year. We wanted to see for ourselves what conditions were like. But if I'd gone along with a camera crew, it's unlikely we'd have got a true picture. So we went undercover. This farm near Sandisil is run by a couple that have been repeatedly warned for years to take better care of their dogs. We looked inside their shed, open to the elements, pen after pen of dogs. When we had posed as potential customers, we met one of the owners, David Jones. Hello. Dogs kept here were reported to have a long list of painful health problems, cysts, lice and matted fur. But the council still re-licensed for breeding. We ask if he's got any older dogs for sale. He'd only just met us, but he grabs one and hands it over. Give it a good the dog has no name, no paperwork, no medical history. We took her to the Hope Rescue Charity in Pontaclean. Its manager, Vanessa Wadden, was so concerned about her health, she took the dog straight to the vet. Not nice at all, bless her. She'd recently given birth, but still had a dead puppy inside her. You get her on some fluids. Yeah, and we'll see if we can help manipulate that out, but I'd be worried about more in there. If she hadn't got out um, and got treatment, that could have led to a toxic shock. She actually could have died. This shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't. I mean, I'm doing this for 15 years now, and it takes a lot to actually make me cry, and yeah. That's not good. After emergency surgery, Olwyn, as she's now known, faces months of recovery and will be looking for a new home. We've worked out there are an estimated 24,000 puppies born in Wales every year. That's worth over 12 million pounds. This next breeder had been licensed by Keradigion Council for years, despite a long list of dogs with serious health problems. On the internet, the breeder says, our love for our animals is the backbone of this family business. We go in to see if they live up to their advert. This is the farm, north of Llandisil. Kennels on the yard are empty. But at the back, in a shed with no windows, we found this. A vet reported that some dogs here had skin conditions like mange and rotting teeth. So why did the council re-license it? We asked three expert vets who have an in-depth knowledge of the regulations in Wales to look at our evidence. 
Between them, they have over 100 years of experience. We showed them the first farm, where we'd been given an ex-breeding dog. It is a farm, and it's not really been modified to look after dogs in the way that you, you'd expect dogs to be looked after. No way of controlling temperature, no beds. The panel also had concerns about how many times David Jones and his wife were re-licensed by Keradigion Council. Although recommendations are made, they keep being made, and no steps seem to be being taken to move this kennels forward or to close these kennels down. They've had so many chances to, to put things right and they failed to do so. They questioned why the second farm, a few miles away, was also re-licensed when welfare issues were evident for years. I wouldn't expect to go into a breeding establishment and see mange two years in a row to see the number of dogs that are here that have overgrown nails, that have quite marked dental problems. Certainly, they shouldn't be licensed. But both farms gave Chris Lawrence serious cause for concern. I would be thinking about ringing the RSPCA about these sort of conditions. Kerry Gun Council didn't want to speak to us, but insisted that improvements had been recently made at Mr and Mrs Jones's farm near Chandissil. But what about all the problems over the years? Well, apparently the council had to strike a balance between enforcement and education. And at this other farm a few miles away, it said it couldn't comment due to ongoing legal proceedings regarding its enforcement action. But it's not just councils that check up on breeders. But vets are part of the welfare system too. Breeders have to pay them to carry out health checks on their dogs in order to keep their licences. And it was this practice, Aeron Vets, that checked dogs on the two farms that we've just seen. But in their official report, Aeron Vets don't appear to question how the dogs were being kept. Mike Jessop is an experienced vet brought in by councils across Wales to advise on animal welfare issues. What questions would you have of this vet? Well, I question whether they are um, truly able to advise on a breeding establishment because they don't seem to understand the link of this, this problem with the health back to the requirements of the regulations for breeding. And they should be putting in a very stern warning here to say this shouldn't be a breeding centre. Our panel agreed. Do you think there's been a failure on, on the part of the vet not fulfilling his duty here? I would say so, yeah. I mean, I, actually, I would say that, that no dog on a breeding establishment should have clinical signs of lice or, or mange. Just unreasonable. It smacks of a general lack of care of what's going on. Aeron Vets wouldn't do an interview, saying they had to respect client confidentiality. But they did tell us that if they felt animal welfare was being compromised, they would do whatever was within their powers to address the matter. But if the animal welfare system fails, it's dogs that suffer and owners who can lose hundreds, even thousands of pounds. At the vets, the outlook for Danielle's puppy, Winston, wasn't good. I got the phone call then that Winston was positive for parvo. He'd contracted a virus that is often fatal. Parvo's highly contagious, but it can be prevented with vaccination. At this point, she rang the breeder. So when I asked the breeder, could I have his vet card, um, he told me that he vaccinates them himself, and he told me that I should have brought him back and that he had all the antibiotics for him. But things took a turn for the worse. Two o'clock in the morning, the vets rung my mum and said that his organs are they're shutting down and it's just going to be a slow, painful death. So can they, you know, make it quick and easy for him? This is the farm Danielle bought Winston from. It's near Kidwelly. We found this shed at the back. Inside, lots of breeding dogs and puppies. We got hold of their council inspection report from earlier this year. 
It says this place had problems with its waste, record keeping, and parvovirus. Astonishingly, it states the owner kicked a dog while the inspection was taking place. He was still given a license, approved by Carmarthenshire Council. The breeder denies animal cruelty. It was also in Carmarthenshire that another puppy farmer handed over sick dogs to a rescue charity last year. Mags and Dud were two of them. Those rescued dogs had been microchipped, but they weren't registered to anyone, as is actually required by law. So we've trawled through hundreds of inspection reports comparing microchip numbers, and we've worked out where those dogs came from. The farmer there is still advertising this relatively unusual breed. So we're going to go down there to see what conditions are like. Our undercover journalist paid an early morning visit to this farm run by Anairin Francis, south of Carmarthen. We spot the same breed of dog as Mags and Dud. I could see two sheds with dogs in. And some of them just looked like concrete boxes, nothing there for them, and they were really dirty. Lots of the dogs just seemed too nervous to come up to us. their basic welfare needs are not being met in, in that sort of environment. It's not clear for how long the dogs that were given away by the breeder had lived here. Come on, baby girl. Come on. Is there any money? Dodd's cancer that she had when she left the farm has now spread and she can no longer walk. Mum, she... Maria has made the difficult decision to have her put to sleep. Here we are, you've got my mates. That's my girl. Mummy loves you. The breeder, Anairin Francis, admits handing over the dogs, but says they were under veterinary supervision. He claims that when the dogs left, they had no visible health problems. Back on the road, we head to another site in Carmarthenshire. This time, the council knew that the breeder was keeping dogs in poor conditions. He was warned repeatedly to improve things. Things we saw for ourselves when we arrived. Dogs with matted coats and concerns about access to water and exercise. This place continues to be licensed. I know, I see you, I see you. Oh, God. There's no heat lamp or anything here. They're just. They're a big tree tree. There's feces all over the floor. There's more small dogs here. Outside, we make a grim discovery. Dead dog. Dead, yeah. Just left there. Yeah. Where do you start? Where do you start? Yeah, there, there's, you know, at a very basic level, there are no clean surfaces. The place is dirty. And some of those very young puppies, the bitches will still be lactating. They've got a higher demand for water, um, and they haven't got access to it. <laughs> It's dark, it's depressing. There's no enrichment for the dogs. And to see the last bit of the footage with a, a dead dog just laid out, why would you do that? C can you understand why this place was allowed to continue? No, no, not a clue. This is the breeder, Kevin Thomas. He told us the kennels are thoroughly cleaned on a daily basis and disputes that dogs didn't have access to water. He denied that his establishment was dark and depressing and insisted there was plenty of enrichment for the dogs. The dead dog we had found had choked on a toy and after seeing a vet, he'd left it outside to be buried. 
He claims he complies with all the regulations and his dogs are happy, well looked after. There is good practice in this industry. I've come to see a breeder in Swansea with expert vet Mike Jessup. Dogs here are surrounded with the sights and sounds of a household environment. If they're bred well, psychologically balanced dogs, well, there's no problem. And he's clearly out, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> Important <laughs> things for me are up-to-date vaccinations and up-to-date health checks. Like every licensed breeder, Steve must have his dogs checked by a vet every year. And they have got to certify that the dog is fit to breed. So they should know that this dog is living in good quality conditions, that is being managed as per the regulations. Steve's records also prove that all of the dogs have been vaccinated. Well, the big scary disease is parvovirus because it's so contagious. It's a, a gastroenteritis, which is largely fatal. So if they're vaccinated, it will stop the progression of that disease quite quickly. The man who sold Danielle her puppy said it had been vaccinated against parvovirus, yet Winston died after contracting it. We paid Winston's breeder a visit, posing as buyers. How are you? Just like Danielle, we were shown into what the breeder calls his dog showroom. So what many breeds you got then here? Uh, Dachshunds, Beagles. He's offering to sell these Dachshunds for £1,200 each. Well, if you're two of you want them, we'll do a bit of a deal. Oh, OK. A puppy should be checked by a vet before any vaccination. But when we asked about parvovirus, he said the vet doesn't come out to see the puppies and he doesn't take them in for a checkup either. Can you come and see? Do I, I, I don't know what I'm aware of. No. I just vaccinate myself, I groom myself. I just did them loads this morning, you know. OK. So that's the powerful things you can do by yourself? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I buy you off the vet. Oh, OK. But a vet has to see the puppies before selling a vaccine. So it would appear this breeder isn't following vaccination rules. And this is his registered vet practice, Towie Vets in Carmarthen. Now, they didn't want to be interviewed, nor would they tell us if they'd supplied vaccines without first seeing the puppies. But we did get hold of the most recent health check they'd done for the breeder. It's lacking in detail, but it does suggest that some dogs are fit to breed, even though they're only three months old. And in one case, a beagle is also listed as fit to breed, even though it's also described as being dead. Does this veterinary report strike you as, as, as rather lax. thin on detail? Yes, lax. Very, lax. very thin on detail. This is the only record of these, these dogs that we have. So we have no idea, are they vaccinated? You know, when did they whelp? How many litters have they had? We have nothing. Towie Vets told us that in light of our inquiries, an investigation is now underway. Carmarthenshire Council told us that inspections only provide a snapshot and they welcome any evidence to help them take appropriate action where needed. It also said it has a strong and proactive approach to enforcing dog breeding standards and has now employed a vet to help them complete inspections. But what about the breeder who didn't follow the rules on vaccinations? The man who sold Winston the beagle pup who died at barely nine weeks old. Alan Douch told us he maintained excellent standards and always addressed things like Parvo and was never cruel to his animals. But he didn't answer all of our questions about vaccinations and antibiotics. So I've come to his farm to try again. Hello. Hello, Mr Douch. Yeah. Hi, it's uh, Willow Davis. Would you like to answer some questions for us about uh, the puppy farming? Well, we 
we don't do any puppy farming. You don't do any puppy farming, Mr. Dutch? But what about the, the puppy you sold that had parvovirus? He hung up on us, but one thing that experts seem to agree on is that it's not just breeders and councils at fault here. Some vets bear responsibility too. The system is definitely broken and, and vets are absolutely in, an integral part of it. We absolutely, as a profession, have a part to play. Our responsibility is to the, the health and welfare of, of the animals under our care. I think, yes, some of the, some of the vet standards have slipped. They're not doing what they should be doing and working in the best interest of the welfare of the animals. There are some clear examples here where professional colleagues have been found wanting and I would have no problems in handing that information over to the Royal College. The Welsh Government said it was deeply disturbed by the evidence we uncovered, but like both councils in this programme, it refused to be interviewed. It's considering introducing something called Lucy's Law. That would mean you'd only be able to buy puppies from the place they were born, and customers could then see if conditions there were bad. But, say our experts, given the weakness of existing laws, more fundamental reforms are required. At the farm near Llandysil, where some dogs had mange and rotting teeth, the breeder, Hridian Jones, has recently had his licence revoked. But is he still selling pups? Yeah. Hello! And he, loves, and he loves his food. He offered us this one for £600. Remember, conditions here weren't good enough to be licensed, but it sounds like there are more pups on the way. Have you got anything else coming up for? Um, the wife's got a Bichon. Uh, they've been ready to go in about three months. Yeah. Yeah. While Keredigan Council told us they'd taken enforcement action against Ridian Jones, at the other farm near Llandysil, where we were handed the sick dog, the licence has been renewed again this time on a three-month rather than 12-month term. The breeders say that they've engaged with the council to ensure the highest industry standard, and that the comments from our expert panel are not relevant. They said sometimes dogs become unwell with problems that haven't yet been diagnosed. But they didn't answer all of our questions about Olwyn, the dog they handed over. We want to ask Mr and Mrs Jones why they gave a severely ill dog to strangers, a dog that needed emergency treatment to save its life, a dog that they gave without any paperwork, without any notification of its medication. Hello? Excuse me, what are you doing? We're from BBC Wales Investigates, Mrs Jones. Can you please go? Can you ask us some questions about the dog no. that you, you, you gave that was seriously ill and nearly died? The, ch the spaniel without any, pa any paperwork at all? Can you tell us what you're doing, Mrs Jones? I am actually now filming you. Can you please leave? So you will not answer any of our questions, no? no. Things are finally starting to look up for Olwyn. Hello, Come on in. Good She's been found new owners, and today, she's meeting them. I'm really happy. She's an absolute sweetheart. A um, bit shy, but her and Annie are getting on. So, yeah, it's perfect. Olwyn can now look forward to a brighter future. But how many other dogs will be as lucky, with so many questions about breeders, councils and even some vets?